something to all of us at the church and sometimes we just get lazy, we could sleep and you could have chosen to sleep but you chose to be with us. Thank you so much. I, I really, really, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. With us. Now obviously uh, I, I do recognize and I, I had lunch with JP the other afternoon and uh, uh, I do recognize that one of the things that ties us together is, is your love for the Lord Jesus Christ so again he wouldn't be here and there, there'd be no other reason uh, to be here but uh, having said that uh, my, my first question to you guys would be and, and you can choose who wants to go and how you want to go but uh, I've, I've met a lot of like I said celebrities, rich people, famous people, successful people, money people and when I meet people like that, uh, in my experience, often they, they don't want to know God. They have no reason to want to know God. So, you guys are obviously famous, so the whole world knows you, you are celebrities. Uh, if you're not rich, I'm going to pray that you be super rich, <laughs> but I believe you are. So you have it all together. What led you to want to know God? Yeah, it's actually a very clear way. Yeah, yeah. You know, more than this, though. Um, I think both my story um, is pretty similar. Um, that led us here today. Um, that's that's part of our uh, story that we've, we've, we've talked a few times. Um, Myself and Jamie played for South Africa now for the last uh, seven or eight years. I hope you're a bit longer, um, as you all know now. <laughs> um, but uh, a conversation happened one day, and as you said, uh, is when you uh, we were young and we were playing for South Africa, and we had a lot of fame and, and everything that comes with that, whether it's money or, or power or and even girls, whatever it made at the stage. And we both had this um, sense of, of, of emptiness. Um, and we had a discussion, it was on a discussion on the cricket field uh, in Australia where JP came to me and we were standing on the cricket field and he said to me, um, do you ever feel like there's something missing? And I said to him, that's the exact same thing that I'm thinking of at the moment. Like, we've got all everything that you've ever dreamed of, you play for your country, you do what you love. Um, so you're ticking all those boxes that you spoke of earlier there, but you still had a sense of um, my heart's not full, uh, there's a lot of space left for me, um, and, and what that is, I don't know. Um, so at, after that tour, we like, sort of made a commitment that we wanted to take our, our faith a little bit more serious, um, and. After that tour, right, I went back and I met Retief, uh, which was one of the um, pastors every nation in Pretoria and South Africa. And, and we started uh, walking a journey together where he introduced me on what it meant to be in a relationship with God. Um, I think when I was younger, I had an understanding, but it, it wasn't a relationship. Um, so he just taught me, uh, taught me what, what it meant to be in a relationship with God. Um, and that changed for, for both of us. I mean, I think four or five weeks later, I got saved, um, gave my heart to the Lord, and uh, went on a tour to Sri Lanka where Jacob was, and 
told him what has happened to me in the off season, and it was a great story. And, and he was um, so keen to get involved as well. And, and then he can tell you his story from his own perspective. But it's just really transformed our, our lives uh, because, as you rightly said, no matter how famous you are, how much money you have, or what you have, or how little you have. Um, being a best human being is the most important thing. And the thing that I understand through a relationship with God, um, and now especially having a child, uh, if we don't understand what that unconditional love is. Um, the more you start having a relationship with God, uh, he starts um, opening that up to you. And as I said, I've got a 10 month old baby now. And for the first time, we experienced that, that deep love um, that he talks about in the Bible, unconditional love. Um, and to think that every single one of us, he has the same love. Um, for me, it's, it's so difficult to understand how you can, you know, there's so much love to give. So that just makes me want to learn more um, from a relational point of view. And it's a journey that I want, so I'm excited to keep learning every day. Thank you, Faf. And uh, it's, it's incredible <coughs> that you would, you would put it that way because, uh, like I said earlier, you know, if, if you seem to have everything in place, you know, success, education, or your uh, fame and all of that, but really inside of us there's a void that none of this can fill. It's a longing for, you know, something that maybe we don't understand and we look for it. Uh, in, in my experience, people look for it in religion. And every everybody is trying to, you know, trying to do their way to find God and, and the, the uniqueness about the love of God and Christianity is that God's love finds us. I mean, He loved us and He came and, and found us. But, but uh, I, I like to way Faf put it that, uh, you know, Ratif is one of our key leaders in our Pretoria church there in South Africa. And, and what, what he's really talking about is, is, is like a life group. You know, we're just meeting together and having discipleship and somebody sharing the love of God to you and walking you through that journey. And that decision that he, he made is now put him on another track of really, you know, understanding how how great our God is. But the incredible thing, and I really need to commend you for this, is that you didn't keep that love to yourself. I mean, you wanted to share it with your friend JP. And that's what, you know, when, when Jesus called his first disciples, they said, oh, let me go and call my brother Andrew. He needs to know this too. And he started, and that's how it, it, you know, it starts to go one to the next. And it's really wonderful. So JP, when, 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 when Faf began to tell you the story, how did, how did that impact your life? He kind of forced me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he hustled you into it. Uh, <laughs> You know, you made the point of uh, we we see us as professional creators, seen as celebrities, we get seen as we've got things together and the fame, the money, you know, that's what people strive for in in the earthly sense. But you know, you, again, you make the point of that void that we feel, and I felt that for years, honestly, I did. And I, I started playing for South Africa in 2004, really. So that's many moons ago and you know throughout my cricketing career up until when I gave my heart to Christ was in 2013 so five years ago I was playing for South Africa but at no point did I feel whole within myself and I tried various things and uh, you, you mentioned religion we tried different things we tried partying we tried uh, excessive drinking you know those were my coping mechanisms with the pressures of what international cricket brought. But even, even though I went through those those uh, those ways of living, it never made me feel whole. And until you know I met I met obviously Fuff was was part of my journey, but I met a whole host of different people that kinda helped me uh, to the journey, to the part of, of uh, getting to know Christ and, and building a relationship with Christ. Uh, but it started sort of in, in 2010, 2011, and I got invited to a to a Bible study by a friend of mine, randomly. And I just thought, one day let me just try and go and see what it's about. 
And I remember sitting there with the pastor of my current church. And there were four people, myself and three others in the pastor. The three of them were saved. I remember how uncomfortable it was. I, I seriously felt like all of their eyes was on me. You know, watching me and with a magnifying glass. Who's this guy that thinks he's famous and all that. But that was just my insecurity. The amount of love and compassion that they showed that evening poured out into me in terms of what Christ is about. You know, uh, the Bible that he mentioned, Christ speaks about, you know, the main thing about what, what being Christian is, is showing people love. And I felt that that day, but I felt uncomfortable with it. And my journey going forward from there was that I took the pastor's number, I then contacted him one-on-one, -on -one, where I met with him for about two years, one-on-one, -on -one, coming in and out of Cape Town, and, you know, I had a lot of questions around my faith and so forth, and I come from a Catholic background, so I knew about God, but I, as I mentioned, we never understood what a relationship was with God. And for about two years, I, I met with him one-on-one, -on -one. he answered questions, he encouraged me in, in my faith, uh, and then, as he said, in Sri Lanka, 2013, again, he forced me into this Bible study room. <laughs> and uh, I remember it very fondly, we, uh, it was about the third session we had, and I think the, the topic of the, of the session was salvation. And it was actually myself, Faf, Abby de Villiers, David Miller, four of us, and uh, we went through this chapter. Actually, yeah, that every nation booklet. It was an every nation booklet, there we go. It's the one-to-one. -one. Yeah, the one-to-one, -one. there we go. And we went through this booklet, oh sorry, that, that chapter, and we went through it for about an hour, hour and a half, and at the end of the chapter, we asked the question, are you willing to commit your life to Christ? Now, Faf was already saved by then, so the three of us, myself, Abby, and David, we looked at each other, and we asked ourselves the question, are we ready to commit our lives to Christ? And on the 27th of July, 2013, in Candy, Sri Lanka, the three of us committed our lives to Christ. Wow, come on, let's go! <laughs> the funny story about that was, so, so we, we, we prayed the Lord's Prayer, and, <laughs> and uh, the three of us prayed together, and we sort of closed our eyes, and, and Faf wants to capture this moment, right? So, we were, we were bound, uh, sort of kneeling down by the bed, and Faf took his camera and, and kept it above us. He took a photo, and obviously the flash went off. <laughs> and uh, my eyes were closed, but I kind of felt this white light <laughs> coming upon me. <laughs> and uh, you know, we finished praying, and Jesus, did you, did you guys feel this? <laughs> And I said, I, I felt this white light and it burst out laughing. <laughs> and it's only really just him taking a, taking a picture. But well, it was a significant moment for us, you know. And I remember that, that night so fondly, I went back to my bedroom. We were actually playing the next day. It was 12, about midnight. So excited. Following my pastor, following my wife, following my parents. Telling them about this commitment that I'd made. Uh, I was so overjoyed that I, I had this exuberant amount of energy that I, that I needed to get rid of and I put my earphones in, it was obviously 12 o'clock at night and I couldn't make a noise, I put my earphones in, played worship music at its loudest and just raised my hands in just the thankfulness and gratefulness what I felt within my heart that I, I, I finally found what I was looking for. Wow. You know, that, that, that's incredible and uh, I, I know for anybody who has uh, a burden for people and would have that moment and, uh, and when the people you're trying to share the love of God to, when they actually want to pray and make that decision, then it, if I was in your place, I'd do the same thing, you know, I, 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 want, the, I want it to be captured. It's been captured there by, you know, in heaven for sure. But we want some, something on earth as well, right? <laughs> but, uh, but... The angels rejoicing. The angels rejoicing. But, like, like JP said, if you read any account in the Bible, when, whenever a person encountered Jesus Christ, they could not keep their mouth shut. 
I mean, he called his wife, he said he called his parents, he called everybody. He wanted the word to be out that something has happened in my life. And that's, that's really being a witness. That's what it's about. When we experience the love of God, you can't stay silent. It's not possible. You want to tell somebody about what Jesus has done. And, and that's really, you know, what, what captures the whole moment. And, uh, but it doesn't stop there. That's just the starting point. You know, it's just like the first run before you maybe get a century, but you need to start somewhere. And that, that seals it. And, and for me, it was 9th August 1992. When I made that decision to follow Christ, I never looked back. It's been many, many, many years. And it's, it's like your birthday. It's your spiritual birthday. It's actually what happened. You know, the Bible says you need to be born again. We've all been born physically and we know our birthdays. But the day you accept Jesus Christ into your life, that is our spiritual birthday. And you should never forget that. It's a moment. It happens in a moment. And then that moment, the Bible says that your name is written in the book of life, in the handprint of God, and nobody can eradicate that. Nobody can remove that. But it comes to us as a gift, the gift of eternal life, and we just receive it. They didn't do anything about it. I didn't do anything. I just made a decision like, like my friend saying, I want Jesus. I want Jesus in my life. And I hope that by the end of this day, that some of you would make that decision. You would want to have Jesus in your life. But let me take this a little further. Uh, I know that you're, we live in, 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 in a world that's, you know, <coughs> and probably you guys are so much more exposed to all of it, and, and you alluded to some of that as, you know, before you knew Christ, it's in parties and in all of this, and you, know, you can look for uh, meaning and significance in all you do. But things don't change after you come to Christ. We are still in the same environment. We are still in the same world and where there's corruption and immorality and you know, all kinds of pressures. How as Christians and believers and followers of Jesus Christ, how do you manage that? Because that's not gone away, that's there. How do you manage walking out your faith in an environment like that? Yeah, that's a very good question because it's actually a, a time that was very significant for me because, I mean, as Jackie said, he talks about that tour of Sri Lanka. Um, but it was a lot easier for us then because we were together uh, and we had fellowship as friends and we were praying together. So we really felt um, strong in our faith because we had a support group. Um, and the first thing about that is you, you, give your, you give your life to the Lord and you expect something in return. Um, and with sports people, um, most of the time it's performance. Um, so you're thinking, right, I've given my heart to the Lord yet. Uh, and he's going to bless me with lots of runs, um, <laughs> great, a lot of man on the match performances. But actually, that turn, like, I really, really struggled. I, I didn't score a lot of runs. So I was like, come on, what? This, is, <laughs> this is not, this is not, this, this, it shouldn't be like this. And, and it was really tough for me. But the nice thing is, I had uh, the people there with me. Um, and we're praying together, and the, the opposite I think happened for you. You had a great time. So, <laughs> it's a pleasure. Yeah. So I really struggled at yeah, that time. We had you on Greece. Yeah. <laughs> so I found it really tough, I mean, and that's one of the things that we've. Um, uh, what about that? Is that you struggle with this? You have to give over everything from yourself, and then just let it over whatever it is, if it's good or bad. Uh, you can't just praise God. For all of these things, there's obviously going to be some tough times, and you're going to stick with it. Um, and that's something you have to be on a journey with, and then all, all by yourself and go through it. But I, at that point, it was really good to have people with me. Take a little step forward. Um, after that, we came to India for the IPL, and the first two or three IPLs that I that I came over, I was the old the old fuck. Um, so I was like Jack was saying, I was doing a lot of different things um, that I was planning this time coming over and doing. So when I came over, I think it was five girl, four or five, um, the, the guys in the team, uh, I told them about it, um, but they weren't Christians. Uh, so 
they would, in a way, not in a nasty way, but in a, in a funny way, um, mock me in, 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 in certain ways because you are now not the fun party going guy. And in a way, you, you feel rejected in a way. Uh, and I think that's a lot of people can associate with that. So that was really tough for me because the, I was always the, this, this fun and outgoing guy and now I was on this different path and I was still fun and I haven't changed at all. But because you're not... Yeah. Yeah. Much <laughs> because people then label you as a Christian. Um, and I, the reason why I find it tough is because then in India I had no support system. There was no guys in the team that was fellow Christians or all my support was overseas. So when I needed support, it would be through a Skype session or, or a phone call. So that, for a new, newly saved Christian at the time, was tough for me. Um, but it made me really strong because through that, um, I used my wife as, as like a, a strengthening pillar and JP and myself would, would have conversations over the phone, um, just talking and praying to each other, and just giving each other encouragement to be strong. Um, so, as I said, you will find easy periods and you will find difficult periods, but through all of those times, you're going to make sure that you remain the same and that your voice is present. Yeah, I, that, that, there's so much of wisdom in that. Because <coughs> yesterday afternoon, before we went to the game, uh, our worship team was having a devotion and David was leading that. And we actually addressed the same question. We opened it up for discussions. How do you manage in this difficult times hit? And difficult times come to everybody. But the Bible says there are those, there's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. And I think that's what it's all about, you know, covenant relationships. And, and that, uh, you know, while, while sometimes we can have our wives and our family, there's nothing like having a brother in Christ. And especially when you're out there, you know, you don't always have to be there together, but you can, somebody you can call, somebody you can pray with, you know, somebody support that you can count on. And I, and I hope everybody has those relationships. And if you don't, do something to get them in your life. I mean, you, we all need relationships in our lives to hold us in those difficult moments because those moments come, they come to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a superstar or not, those moments will come. And, and when those moments come, you need to have somebody who can, who can lift you up uh, at that time. I'm kind of reminded by something as you're speaking about this. The Bible speaks about to be of this world, but not to be in the world. And I think that is what's, what strengthens us to go into the world, is, is those relationships, those friendships, that brother in Christ that you have. Because when you have that strong foundation, you then have the strength to go into the world and know that you are covered in, in His blood. You know what I mean? And I actually just want to take an opportunity to to acknowledge two people here as well, Purvis and, and Dominic. Dominic's from the UK and Purvis is from South Africa. And you talk about uh, brothers in Christ, you know. I mean, I, I don't really know them that well, but it feels like I know them for many years just because we serve the same God, you know. And, and that's the beauty of, of having uh, brothers in Christ and sisters in Christ. You don't need to know that person that well. But there is a genuine, genuine connection that uh, nobody in the world can, can take away from. Yeah, and that, that really, you got to experience that to know that. You, you suddenly find, uh, uh, you know, that you, there's, there's some connection. It's, I think it's really the Spirit of God in us that, you know, causes us to, uh, to love one another. And, and that's what Jesus says. He says, by this all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And what a way, I mean, that God can connect us. And I didn't know these gentlemen, you know. But it seems like now I, I know so much about them. When we had lunch, it seemed like there was, there was just a connect. Why? It's really because of what God has done. But let me switch the gears a little bit. Uh, I know JP's wife is not here. I don't know if your family is here with you. But I want to ask you as, because uh, I'm, I'm a husband and dad too, and uh, I know that 
family matters to God a lot. And um, as husbands and as spiritual leaders in, in your homes, how do you live out that example to your, to your families? So to, to carry on from, from my sort of story, when, when I got back to, to South Africa from Sri Lanka, I then got home and I shared with my wife that I would like to get baptized. And within a day, my wife came to me and told me she wants to get baptized with me. So on the 7th of September, that same year, the two of us got baptized together, which was an absolute, absolute uh, an amazing experience. Why? Because I got, we got to experience that moment with our close friends and family. Now, to answer your question, I think there's a, we have to acknowledge the responsibility that we have as the head of our homes, the spiritual head of our homes. And it's amazing to see now that we are fathers as well, how important it is to influence your kids in the right way and to get them to understand and realize uh, where, this, where, where we come from, where, where's the source of where we come from. Uh, so it's, it's interesting, my, my daughter is two and a half now, so she's getting to that age where she can have a good conversation with you, uh, acknowledging things that you say, and it's the cutest thing and the most amazing experience to, to see them close their eyes and hands closed and you know just say the words of, my, my, my wife was telling me uh, last, last night actually how my daughter was saying, Father Jesus, and thank you Jesus for this food, you know, and it's just amazing and, and important to know as, as spiritual leaders of our homes, how important it is to create that, that foundation for our kids and, and for our wives. Uh, I mean, our wives know each other very well, and it's amazing to see how the friendship has blossomed there, apart from our friendship, based on the fact that, you know, we all serve the same one. You know, Jamie said uh, something about, obviously, uh, and I, I've, I tell this to many leaders, I tell this to people that men are the spiritual leaders, should be the spiritual leaders in their homes. And in many cultures, we, we always see the woman taking lead in worship, but there's something when men rise up and they lead in their homes. And if you're a married person here, you're a husband, and your father, my word to you is rise up and take spiritual leadership. You know, pass the legacy on to your children. It says train a child in the way they should go and when they're old they'll not depart from it. And that's what we want to see happen. That when we raise the next generation, it's always about what the fathers would impart to their children. So thank you for sharing that. But also the, there's another interesting thing that, that you shared and you said uh, that when you went back you made a decision to get baptized. Now that's significant because let me tell you, in many churches and all of this, you know, they 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 would baptize an infant, and you know they believe that that's that's it. But an infant can never repent of their sins. An infant can never make a decision for themselves that they want to follow Jesus Christ. But JP did that, and then he wanted to take that a step further. And baptism doesn't save us, but baptism is a public declaration that I want to follow Jesus Christ now, that He's my Lord and He's my Savior. And what a joy for me that your wife would want to do that, right with you, together with you. That's just incredible. And I hope that for some of you, in case you're here and you've made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, but you've never followed Him in the waters of baptism, maybe it's a good thing to consider making that decision as well. I just have a few more questions. Uh, just, sorry, I just, just want to add on to Jackie. So, uh, just to give you a little bit of a different angle of uh, my, my wife and her story. The same thing as I went back and I was, and I was very glad and she was very glad that I decided to follow Jesus. Um, and I was hoping that she would um, want to get baptized with me as well. But the thing with the you know, everyone's in a different path, a different journey. Um, and I was actually speaking to, to Pastor Tiff about it, and he, and he said to me that it's important that you are just there to support them and just pray for them and, and, and give no pressure on her whatsoever. So it took her about two months, um, and I didn't give her any pressure. Um, it was tough because you want to, like you want to be on the same 
on the same wavelength. Um, and about two months later, then she said to me, yes, she's ready. Um, and she wants me to baptize her. So I'm like, well, I'm not, I'm not going to have to do it. So, yeah, so I was, initially you, you, you sort of, you're not threatened, but you feel like you're not the right guy that should do it. Um, but then the pastor um, showed me the scripture in the Bible to, to show that obviously anyone can, can do that. You just, you're just a fisherman and you save people's lives and just bring God, uh, people to God. So that was great for me to be a part of that. But I, and I've said on many occasions as a man, uh, your question about your reading, um, the relationship and stuff like that. Like I started understanding the, the principles of what it is to be a godly man and what it is or, you know, to lead by example, um, all that stuff. As you said, the, the husband submits to God and then the wife submits to the husband. So I understand my role uh, as a leader in the household and, and making sure that I do everything right and then your family will follow. So if that didn't happen, I, I, I can honestly say that I wouldn't be sitting here today like, because before I know what my life was like before that and after that it's just like everything was just gone uh, in a much better direction. So I'm very thankful for it. And, and, uh... I, I couldn't agree more with you that you know <coughs> leadership is never forcing people to make a decision. Leadership is really giving people the space to make those choices and leading by example. And you know, uh, it happened with me too. I mean, my wife and I got saved and committed our lives to the Lord on the same day, but she did get, get baptized much later. And sometimes we just let we let our, we have to give God space to work. We don't have to take that position and try to direct every decision everybody makes. We need let God change and work in people's lives. So I think you, you, you led really well in that. And, uh, uh, but here, here's my final question to you before we open it up for some questions from our church. Uh, if, if you were to take your whole relationship with Christ to this day, uh, and I know it's, um, it's it's a journey, like you said, and uh, generally it's an exciting journey. If, if you were to summarize it and put it into just one word, uh, what would that be? How do you live for Christ? One word. I say this with the utmost respect. The word that comes to me is challenging. And the reason why I say that is because I don't believe that living a or walking a Christian journey is easy sailing. You know, the Bible doesn't say that at any point. Yeah. There are some mountaintop moments, but there's definitely gonna be some valley moments as well. And I think it's it's those struggles that we face on a day day to day basis that makes you appreciate those mountaintop moments. And at the end of the day, the, the, the story's been written already. You know, we know where we're going. Uh, Christ died on the cross for our, for our sins and He's given us an opportunity at eternal life. So that's the finished story. But we don't know what's in between. So we've got to wake up day by day thanking Him for what opportunities He's given us, whether it's a success story or a challenging moment. And I think that's the, if we can grasp that as Christians, uh, you know, we can encourage one another on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not about praising Him through the good times, but praising Him through every moment of your life. So, uh, as I said, with utmost respect, I, I hope that's the word that comes to me. And, and that is so true. Jesus himself said, in this world you're going to fail, have troubles, but take heart, I have overcome. And because he said that, you know, there's, there's something in us that gives us the grit to overcome. And we are not bogged down by the challenges, but, you know, in James it says that uh, persevere when, when challenges come because it shapes our character, it shapes who we really are. And who would know better about winning and losing than these guys here who thanks their life, you know, they are. But, but that's true. Thank you for that word, challenge. When challenges come, be strong. Uh, what about yeah, Jade spoke very well there. Um, the word that I, the only word that I could think of there was relationship. 
Um, as I mentioned, my understanding of a relationship before was completely different to what it is now. Um, so my journey every day with God is, um, and as JP said, the good and the bad times is, is how can I make sure that my relationship is always there? Um, because if I don't have, um, and that's with anyone, if I don't have a relationship with, with JP where I'm constantly talking to him all the time, how can I expect to grow our relationship? as friends. Um, so for me that's the same thing with, with God. I need to make sure that I put in the time to get to know God better, to understand His Word better, um, and therefore uh, having a better relationship with Him. Um, and by doing that, He'll unfold a lot of things in my life um, and in His plan that I never thought of. Um, so the times that I feel furthest away is when my relationship is not as strong and I'm not putting in that time. So relationship in terms of just making sure you're putting the effort, whether it's into a person or your family member, your kids or God, it's the same principle. Uh, and when I do that, I feel a close connection. No matter what, as JP said, no matter what your day is, good or bad, you still feel that, that close relationship. So in every nation, if you're if being part of this family, you know this, we have a saying, it says, discipleship is relationship. How well you would put that, and how important that is that relationships really matter. They're crucial. It's it's really the glue that holds everything together. Uh, not only with God, but with every other relationship that you would have, and how important that is, and how intentional we need to be to invest and to build into relationships. They just don't happen just by chance. We have to be intentional about doing that. Thank you so much.